have you ever contemplated the rewards you will perhaps receive in heaven? Or are you like many today who think they deserve and are expecting their rewards now? Many false teachers, it seems, are obsessed with earthly rewards more so than any heavenly reward. They don't want to have to wait for their rewards. They think they deserve and they want their rewards now. Could it be that perhaps deep down in their worldly, covetous little hearts, they know earthly rewards are all the reward they are going to get? For example, little Benny Hinn has publicly stated, I don't need gold in heaven, I gotta have it now. Now, pardon me, but that just sounds like covetous greed. Then we have little pretty boy, Joel Osteen. And he wants his best life now, and by golly, he seems to be getting it. He uh, just treats himself ever so well. Of course, if you're not so great, you can stand in front of the mirror all day long and tell yourself how amazing you are. But do you think that's very scriptural? This little heretic Joel has come out with a new book, a means by which he has stated publicly is how he makes his fortune. Joel was interviewed on TV recently in regards to this book. The following observations are by someone who happened to hear it. I quote now from the article that relates to the interview. He was hawking his latest book called The Power of I Am. To start off, the name mocks the name of God as translated in the English. But since when do heretics care about mocking God? The premise of the book is psychology wrapped in sorcery and witchcraft and humanism. Osteen contends that you can attract things to you just by the power of your words. And if you say, I am talented or I am prosperous, you attract and become those things. You see, the power is not of God, it is with you and the power of your own words. That is humanism, pure and simple. Osteen contends that you can attract things to you just by the power of your words. For instance, if you say, I am ugly or I am stupid or things like that, you attract and become what you say. But if you look further, you will discover that this kind of so-called profession resembles incantations practiced by sorcerers and witches. It is grounded in sorcery, and it is demonic through and through. And all of it is intended to make your life more prosperous and enjoyable. There is no room for humility or for being thankful for God for what you have and don't have. Osteen never mentioned the name of Jesus nor the gospel. End quote. What Joel neglects to tell people is that we are to be Christ obsessed, not self obsessed. We are to humble ourselves before the hand of Almighty God that he may exalt us in due time for his glory, not our own. He also neglects to teach them that they are to be content with what they have, not covet after more than they need, not covet the things of the world. It is written, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. 
No waiting for heavenly rewards for Joel or many other wolves and false teachers today. In fact, they have it so good, I bet they are in no hurry to enter into heaven. It is written, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Earthly treasures are fleeting and vain, and it is certain we can take no earthly treasure we may obtain to heaven with us. It is not always just wolves that hold covetous conversations. There are those who are always eager to talk possessions, the ones they have, the ones they are going to obtain. Joyce Meyer teaches all the same heresies that Kenneth Copeland teaches. She teaches women to be appearance obsessed and greedy for gain and she tickles their itching ears and they love it to the point that they make her an idol. I listened to Joyce during a recorded interview the other day and I am quoting from that interview the link to which I shall post under this video. This is what she had to say when questioned about her personal jet and her great wealth. Oh, why can't you look at the good I am doing? Is there no reward for anyone who is doing what I am doing? Do we only have to suffer and have nothing so people will be happy? Are we to sound our own trumpet? Are we to speak of our own great works and what we deserve? It is written, Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. It is written, Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Joyce is far from suffering. Anyone who has the money to pay for that much plastic surgery is not suffering. Anyone living in a mansion with a private jet is not suffering. Joyce, in spite of her story of a pitiful childhood, which she milks for all she can gain from it, is a teacher of false doctrine, weaved in with, as she calls it, practical teaching. She deserves hellfire. That is what she deserves. But God is merciful. He is giving her, along with these other motivational speakers who make merchandise of the sheep for their own pride-filled, greedy, covetous gain, ample opportunity to repent. Listen, it is only of the Lord's mercy that we are not all consumed. That is what we deserve. As it is written, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. For Joyce and Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and Joel and Benny and others to teach people to covet the world's treasures is to God a total abomination. They are corrupt persons who have no true understanding of the scriptures, nor the heart of God. As it is written, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we bought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich 
fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. There is more to share on this particular subject, so this will be a two-part video.